1993, writer David Michelini joined forces with the artist Mark Bagley, and then Ron Lim, and then Sam De La Rosa. This is Venom Lethal Protector. Oh boy, the image of Spidey on the cover says it all. The book opens up in San Francisco. A young woman is in an alley being mugged by some mohawked fiend. All of the sudden, out jumps Venom. The lethal protector. Venom slams the dude into the nearby brick wall, and then, like, sends his tendrils into the mugger's mouth and nose, killing him. I mean, it's Venom. What, what do you think he's gonna do? Give him to the cops? And then... <laughs> And then he, like, looks at her and is like, Oh, hey there! Then he hands her her purse, pats her on the head, and then just leaps away! <laughs> and then the woman, like, is even more terrified. So Venom swings around the city, talking to himself. Then he stops on some roof and, like, jumps down a building and he transforms his suit into, like, the good old 80s, 90s crop top with jeans combo. So Eddie walks into the hotel because he needs the place to stay when he isn't out saving the city. Unfortunately, some nearby cops see him walking down the street. Wait, how do they know this is Eddie Brock? He's walking away from them. Did they fucking see him, like, fall down from the rooftop and transform and are like, Hey, does that guy who was just in the big scary black goop suit look like the famous serial killer guy known for his big scary black goop suit? Anyway, fucking Eddie is, like, signing at the front desk, and the cops rush in with their firearms drawn and attempt to arrest him. Eddie subdues the cop and then cancels his hotel room and leaves. He rushes outside and leaps away! And on the ground, some tourist takes a picture of Venom swinging away. And that tourist is, is, is just some guy. I don't, I don't fucking know. He's just a tourist in San Francisco. Cut to the Daily Bugle headquarters in Manhattan. Ben Urich is talking to good old Peter Parker because if you want your spin-off series to get readers, you have Spider-Man make an appearance in it. And oh boy does he. Anyway, Ben tells Peter that Venom was spotted in San Francisco and then Peter tells the reader the fucking origin of the symbiote. The origin being, if you don't already know it, there was a, like an alien goop that appeared in the 1984 Secret War, when Spider-Man had to go get a new suit. Then sometime later, Peter gets rid of the symbiote at a church. Then Eddie Brock thought he was had a scoop on this like serial killer named Sin Eater, who was a guy who like put on a ski mask and shot people. Turns out the guy wasn't Sin Eater, just a crazy guy. Eddie Brock lost his job. Then Eddie and the symbiote connected when he Eddie was at the church because of their shared hatred for Peter Parker, Spider-Man, and become Venom. Yeah, and then some other stuff happened and Venom and Spidey had made a truce or something. Peter decides that he has to go to San Fran to hunt down Venom. The next day in San Fran, Eddie walks around the park talking to his symbiote about how alone they are. Eddie rounds a corner and he sees some guys in suits beating the shit out of homeless people. Eddie makes his way over to the group and confronts one of the guys and the guy pulls a gun out and then Eddie turns into Venom and starts beating the shit out of everybody. Just in time for Spider-Man, who is now in the city patrolling looking for Venom, to hear the gunshots. In the park, Venom is killing guys when suddenly Spider-Man appears and attacks him. Then Venom just grabs him and is like, What the fuck are you doing here? We had an agreement. Also, those guys you think are cops? are cops. Then the goons open fire on the pair. Spider-Man leaps out of the way and defeats the attackers. He turns around and doesn't see Venom or the people that were there. <gasps> Where could they have gone? Then we jump to Portland, Oregon. General Orwell Taylor is watching the news about the fight between Spidey and Venom in the park. Don't worry if you don't know who General fucking Orwell Taylor is, because he was made specifically for this book. Anyway, he's like, Vengeance shall be mine! He's like looking at a picture of a young man, huh? I wonder who that is in relation to him. And then he picks up the phone and like, calls some guy. Yep, that's that. Now we're back at San Francisco. Well, under San Francisco. Eddie and some of the homeless people that he saved walk through these like, giant underground tunnels. The woman, I think her name's like Elizabeth or something. She tells Eddie that they have like, a sanctuary down in the tunnels. 
Then one of the transients is like, what the fuck? Do you people know who this guy is? He's a, he's a murderer. He's a monster. What are we doing? Which I'll admit is a pretty sound argument if you're in universe and don't know that you're in a comic about Venom becoming an anti-hero. But everyone just like tells him to shut up and then they keep walking. Eddie gets some information on why the suits are attacking them. Basically, some guy named Roland Treese has been trying to get the homeless people out from the underground for some reason. Around the corner, you see two giant mech suits that are called diggers. The diggers are used to, well, dig, but also to try and find the homeless people. Eddie gets grabbed by one and then starts attacking them as Venom. Then, the ground beneath them breaks, causing Venom and one of the diggers to fall through time! So they're down there and then the homeless people from the tunnel appear, which <laughs> makes the digger operator realize that they did not, in fact, fall through time. Uh, then the second digger jumps down, the local, like, fucking militia appears, and one of the diggers kills one of them, so Venom kills both of the pilots. So Elizabeth tells everyone that Venom protected them, and then Eddie fucking, like, turns the suit into a police outfit and he's like, I'm here to protect and serve, and look at him, he has like a, he has a little Venom symbol on his hat. So Eddie and Elizabeth walk away and they're walking down the streets and then she tells him why there's a fucking turn of the century city underneath San Francisco. There was an earthquake, it sunk, and then a homeless guy found it. On the surface, Spider-Man is trying to find his way around the city. Then he like breaks into a, a, a fucking morgue. And then he finds a file on Eddie Brock's father, Carl. Not sure why you had to break into a morgue to find that out. Just just go look at a fucking phone book. It's 1993. So back underground, Eddie stands in front of a council of underground people. And they vote that he can't stay. So Eddie leaves. And when he's walking around on the surface, he's like, Wait, if I can stop that rolling tree sky, the undergrounders will let me stay. Across the city, Peter Parker is now at Carl Brock's house. And he's like, hey, are you Eddie Brock's dad? And then Carl slams the door in his face. And that's it. Back in the city, Venom breaks into the Treese building. He sneaks around and finds a scale model of the park. And that Treese is financing a renovation of the park. And like a security force shows up and Venom either beats the shit out of him or kills him. And then just like Peter Pan, he leaps out of a window. Venom lands in the alley and hangs around and tries to figure out what he's gonna do next when suddenly the jury appears! Oh my goodness! And they shoot Venom with weird glow sticks and General Taylor, the leader, tells Venom that he killed his son when he escaped prison and that the jury were like his son's friends then venom beats everyone up and runs away again back across the city at carl brock's house spider-man has recently broken in and demands to know about eddie carl brock is just like fuck off or i'm calling the cops luckily for spidey there is a maid that agrees to tell him what he wants to know she tells him that carl's wife was the most important thing to him then she died during childbirth. Even though he gave Eddie all the toys and shit that he wanted, he never gave him one thing. Affection. Even when Eddie worked hard and excelled in things. Then after the Watergate scandal, Eddie wanted to be a reporter. Where the fuck does this story fit in with continuity, by the way? How, how do they work that out? Do they just... Is it like the Punisher's Wars? Do they just change the scandals? Anyway, after it was revealed that Eddie got the report on Sin Eater wrong, communication between him and his father ended, and that's all she says, because Spider-Man leaves and is like, I have no idea what the fuck to think of that. Like, that didn't really help, but whatever. I guess you gotta know your enemy. On the Golden Gate Bridge, which is like extremely golden, Venom is attacked by the jury again. They fight, and then like three of the jury guys toss him off the bridge and into the street, and he disappears. Psst. He's under the garbage truck. And he's just been hanging on under this garbage truck and he he gets out from under it and is instantly spotted by some guy working with the jury. Then Sentry, no, not the interesting Sentry, appears and fights Venom. Some random fucking helicopter shoots Sentry and allows Venom to hop aboard. It's revealed that the mysterious benefactor who owns this helicopter is none other than Roland Treese. And he has a proposition for Venom. He wants Venom to be his new head of security. And Venom is like, okay. So hours later in the Mojave Desert, what is happening? 
I thought this was about Venom being a lethal protector of the innocents in San Francisco and, like, doing stuff like Spawn or something. What is he going to lethally protect in the desert? Fucking lizards? Whatever. Trees told Venom that they were going to meet out in this bunker in the desert, and Venom knows it's a trap, but is immediately ambushed by a fire trap. So Venom is in a sonic bubble being held prisoner by the Life Foundation, who are like shitty Spider-Man villains. Anyway, their plan is to take the symbiote, make it birth other symbiotes, so they can have guards for their underground vaults for when the world ends. Back in San Fran, Spider-Man stops some criminals and bums a quarter off of a cop so he can use a payphone. So Spidey calls MJ, who just happens to be doing some aerobics in like a sexy aerobics outfit. Mmm, damn. Look at that 90s comic hair. Anyway, he tells her that he has to stay longer than expected because there have been reports of, like, other symbiotes appearing near San Francisco. So Spidey goes to this mall where he suspects another attack will take place, and he finds none other than... Scream. No, not that scream. The epitome of shitty ideas and 90s hair scream. Back in San Francisco, Elizabeth and her son walk through the underground city. Oh shit, I completely forgot about them. Anyway, they're walking around, and then this reverend who hates Eddie and the guy from earlier, Nathaniel, who was yelling about him, they're like, shut up, he's a monster. And she's like, no. And that's fucking it. So at the mall, Spidey is fighting Scream, and she throws a tree at him, and Spidey, like, jumps to the ceiling. And since she isn't experienced in fighting Spider-Man, she just gets beat to the ground immediately. So she escapes on a hovercraft. Luckily, Spider-Man made it out just in time to shoot a web and, like, trail behind it. Back in the Underground Park People storyline, one of the transients has been captured and is currently being interrogated by Treese. Yeah. And he, uh, nothing really comes of it. Pretty sure the guy dies. So Spidey finally arrives at the Life Foundation bunker in the Mojave. He sneaks around some corridors and then runs into a bunch of crimson guards from G.I. Joe and he fights them. As this is happening, Eddie and the symbiote are disconnected from each other, torn apart. It seems extremely painful from the amount of screaming Eddie Brock is doing. As they're fighting, fucking Carlton Drake, some Life Foundation guy, appears on the screen that is in the middle of the hallway for some reason. He and Spider-Man talk, and then he, like, turns the camera and shows Spider-Man Eddie Brock's dead body that's just laying on the floor. And suddenly, five symbiotes appear! Because, because why the fuck not? Venom is a badass, and everybody likes him. He's in his own series right now, which you're reading, and... The new character who appeared a year ago, Carnage, is a badass, and he has his own fucking series called Maximum Carnage, which doesn't really make a lot of sense in the storyline right now, I don't know. They made new symbiotes, and they're called Scream, Agony, Phage, Riot, and Lasher. Back in San Francisco, Therese is getting ready for his renovation of the park, which is code for blow it up and find a big stash of gold in them hills. Yep, there's, uh, gold under the park in the city somewhere, apparently. In the Mojave, Eddie wakes up and knocks out these two guys, all while he's naked, by the way. Meanwhile, poor fucking Spider-Man is having to fight five symbiotes at once by himself. Almost gets speared to death by one of them. But Eddie Brock appears in the doorway, still naked, and is like, Those are my children! I must save them! Come to me, my children! Come to me! Then, simultaneously, <laughs> All five symbiotes punch Eddie Brock's face, and he's like, ah, shit, I, that didn't work. Eddie and Spidey, like, run away down a hall and make their way to the lab where the symbiote is currently being held. Then Venom and Phage get into a, like, a scuffle, and Spidey shoots Phage with a laser accidentally that fucking rots away the symbiote on his arm. Venom devises a plan to use that laser on the others. Spidey is like, Venom, that kills people! Venom tells him not to worry, because the other symbiotes probably haven't bonded 
to the hosts completely, and they probably won't die. Then he renders Spider-Man unconscious by choking him out. All the symbiotes run into the room, and Venom lasers them, causing the symbiotes to, like, burn, I guess, and wither away. And the five people are completely, like, knocked unconscious. As they're doing this, the base is set to self-destruct. So, Venom and Spider-Man run away to try to escape. And while they're running down the hall, Venom disappears. The base is evacuated, and then it blows up, and... Holy shit! Those five people are definitely dead, right? And uh, let's see. Where's the clicking? Uh, what's your fucking name? Scream Marvel. Okay. Marvel Wikipedia page. Scream. Okay. God damn it. Spidey hitches a ride on a, like, helicopter thing, while Venom forces some guy to drive all the way back to San Francisco so he can kill Trees. The final issue says it's not their final battle. But it just might be their greatest. You be the judge. At Roland Treese's mansion, the head of security finds the entire crew dead, and Venom appears and scares the guy, and the guy locks himself in a panic room with a giant steel door that no one can- Venom rips the door out, so then the guy activates a laser grid. So Venom sends his tendril to start suffocating the guy. Long story short, the man tells Venom what I already told you about the underground city and the gold. Also, there's charges all over the place, and it's set to blow up at sunrise. A bit later, like around sunrise, Spidey, who is like hanging out on a tree branch, sees Venom like running around in the fog. Then he fights Venom again. Venom wraps him up in goo and asks for his help. Spidey reluctantly agrees and Venom tells him what's going on. The duo confront Treese, but two diggers appear and attack. Well, Spider-Man and Venom defeat the diggers and two more appear while Treese runs to the trailer that has the detonator. Venom gives chase to Treese. Unfortunately, a giant fire starts because this tanker was damaged and spilled fuel all over the place. Venom's like, Ah, shit! Fire! Now what am I supposed to do? Well, he decides that since he is the lethal protector, that he has to save the people. Against all odds, he tendrils his way through the fire and into the trailer, and grabs Treese before he hits the detonator. Which he had plenty of time to do, by the way. Spidey asks him why he did it, and Venom asks Spidey if he would have done any less. Spider-Man is flabbergasted by this, then he hears the sirens as like, Well, uh, I guess I should get Venom over to the police, and then he looks around. And Venom's gone, and he escapes into the nearby crowd of people. In the epilogue, it's revealed that Trees told the city officials about the gold. Now some construction workers are unearthing it, and... What the fuck? It's like three feet underground! Whatever. So Elizabeth and the mayor of the underground city appear behind Eddie, who is like watching the guys unearth the gold, and they bring him back to the council. They have a second vote, and they allow Eddie to live with them. And he tells him not to worry, because from this day forward, he will protect all innocents, and anyone who harms them will answer to Venom. The end.